This is an essay excerpt from my book, uh, 2010 publication, uh, Philosophy Thought That Counts. I'll try to read rather quickly. Scientists seem to make of all reality an algorithmically compressible representation of abstract structures, while for the non-mathematically minded philosophers and theologians, some are mathematicians too, the realm of a priori and analytic mathematical models of cosmology might always reside with Godelian limits of competence short of an ability to be meaningful theories of everything. Logic itself, like mathematical algebras and geometries, might be criterion-based in transitive and non-associative phenomenalities. A geometry satisfactory in one universe might have no coherent value in another. It might not be possible to translate the terminology of one frame of reference and representational value into that of another. Not only might not a different scale exist between Euclidean and Riemannian geometries, it could not be used as a way to conform meanings between one system of values and dimensions and another. There may be no universal resemblance of existing language meanings that would transfer through translations from one universe to another. Some Christians and philosophers might rely on faith to overcome the universal gap of comprehension from the contingent to the non-contingent universes transcending space-time. The differences between words and object reference generally are absolute. Words and language are generally representational with objects given reference labels validated by the users of the language. A horse is a horse even if one calls it a cow or an egg plant, or initially call it something other than horse. The horse is a non-linguistic thing in itself, for which labels of language are convenient address labels of description. Obviously, such a word-object relationship for philosophers might raise the parallel question of the relationship to math models of the universe and its hypothetical n dimensions and the universe in itself. How much of modal geometries or human psychological referent use truths or functioning labels of a pragmatic nature? With the Einsteinian revolution of the meaning of space-time and the evolution of alternative mathematical models of the universe, philosophers too were provided with additional opportunities to reform and reconstruct meanings such as universe, contingency, and etc. alongside opportunities to consider modal logic possible universes with those of mathematical group symmetries of possible universes created in abstract a priori parameters of reference. This led again to some to consider the nominalist versus realist epistemological evolution of approaches to logic that had continued in the analytic, li linguistic, philosophical tradition of the second half of the 20th century. If that entire universe might be made of strings or loops that appear as quarks in a four-dimensional reduction from a higher-dimensional universe, and if those strings and loops were themselves phenomenal, then what aspect of reality could be either just nominal or just realist in a platonic context? If Plato Platonist realism requires some realm of transcendental forms, couldn't the transcending forms of quarks or strings, membranes or virtual particles in a perturbative vacuum serve to variously support or oppose the premises of each side as evidence for or against? If virtual particles or any particles appear from a vacuum because of quantum uncertainty to eventually form a concentrating event such as a black hole, giving rise to expanding universes as the white hole side of the black hole, in effect, the questions logically remain, where did the vacuum come from, where did the quanta arise from first, why did anything exist instead of nothingness? Theologians of the primordial quantum causality would wonder if the existence of something rather than nothing, a something with an unnecessary existence in regard to the causality of the creation of the universe, did not create the conditions or the initial causal unified field in which the universe might inflate. What sort of actual nothingness should have permitted an original primary charged or non-charged vacuum nothingness space or non-dimensional space to be? The universe may be one of an infinite series of universes emanating from a perturbative or null space with embedded quantum energy or alternatively recurrent from some mythical contact of parent membranes causing the birth of another universal cycle, yet philosophers too wonder why the first cause had the phenomenal occasion to be made to exist. Surely this must be a product of free will by some unencumbered creator with an infinite ability to emanate ideas that issue into being and becoming before space or time and in the process creating space and time. The capability of creating an infinite number of dimensions and universes may be one of the attributes of God that we wonder of, for whom the physical and phenomenal universe or transparent relationships may be the most important or value-added item so far as humanity is concerned, and it is in this concern about relationships that an existentialist, spiritual, and phenomenal reflection upon both realism and nominalism may find a congruent field for contemplation, and that's the end of this section of the excerpt.